Hi, in this video I'm going to show how to use data augmentation and data stores from the MATLAB uh, Deep Learning Toolbox. The importance of data augmentation uh, is to uh, increase the amount of data, especially when you have a scarce amount of data, uh, because uh, we, uh, normal people are not like Google that have millions and millions of, of data. For example, in image pro, uh, for computer vision application, we don't have uh, millions of of images. So uh, if we are able to do some transformations, like a fine transformations, translation, rotation, uh, then uh, we can increase uh, uh, the number of data instead of uh, instead of having thousands of images, we can have 10,000. And also other affine transformations like, uh, I mean, sorry, other transformations like uh, inserting noise, uh, changing constraints uh, of the color of the, uh, changing the color of the images, uh, intensity. Uh, I'm gonna show uh, how all of these uh, transformations can be done in an image and then using in combination of data store uh, and data store is the, that's the basic data structure that uh, MATLAB uses for the deep learning for training neural networks it's, it's how you supply the data into the deep learning uh, network. Uh, data stores uh, can form uh, a little bit similar to TensorFlow in the sense that they are like graphs you form uh, graphs of tensors and uh, in this graph of tensors, you can uh, apply different operations. So uh, a node of a graph can be a transform and the inputs uh, can be various uh, tensor, arrays of tensors and things like that. And you can combine tensors into one, etc. So I'm gonna go through that in here. I'm not gonna show how uh, these data stores are fed into the neural network. And for that, I am adding a couple of references in the description at the bottom uh, of this video. Okay, so let's start uh, with the fine transformations. Let's uh, load an image. Okay, so this is a squirrel that we're gonna transform. Uh, whoops. Let me show the image. Okay, so this is the image that we're gonna transform. And let's start with uh, some fine transformations. Uh, let's uh, start with rotation. And for that, uh, for rotation, uh, we are going to use uh, the IM warp method from the image processing toolbox. But uh, before using IM warp, we have to apply some uh, rotation. We're going to use uh, this function uh, to apply a random affine transform to the transformation. What this is going to do is going to create a transform object that is going to have an affine transformation matrix. And uh, notice that there's uh, one parameter, but you can specify uh, many to them. Uh, similar to what happens in the uh, image uh, a processing uh, API of Keras that you can specify for of that augmentation, you can specify multiple uh, random uh, affine transformation in the same uh, command line. You can do the same here. So let's start with this one and take a look at the affine transformation. You can see that the upper elements of the matrix corresponding to a rotation are the one used. And also to use IM warp, we need a, a, ref, a warp view reference frame, and we're gonna use the find output view for that. We need the size of the original image and the transformation that we just created. And with that, we have uh, the numbers in the x and y axis. And once we have the transformation and the warp view reference frame, we can use IM warp, which takes the transform here, and then the original image, and now we have the augmented image. So let's take a look at how it looks. So we have a, a rotated uh, image, so we're going to do the same with a translation. In here we're going to have a different, it was, uh, you, you can see you have a couple of parameters at the same time here, and the X and Y transformation here, the diagonal stays in one. Let's take a look at how it looks. Again, we use the same uh, reference frame, we use IM warp, passing transform and the reference frame, and we see the augmented uh, data. We translate it more to the right than, and a little bit from to down transformation. Okay, so now let's see scaling. Uh, scaling uh, in here uh, is the, you specify the minimum and maximum of the scaling. And scaling goes the same way in both in both dimensions. So you can see in the transformation matrix that uh, it's like only augmenting uh, the, the size of the agent vector, and the same value goes in, in both uh, dimensions. I guess there should be a way of doing it in differently in different dimensions, but that might be sharing. We, 
which we are going to go through that in a moment again the reference frame and the im warp same command and we can see that there's a zoom but also we can also diminish the size and by and we can do that by using values less than one but they have to be monotonically increasing because we are given the minimum and the maximum and let's see how it looks now oops yeah we decrease the size of the image okay so let's go uh, also you can apply reflection uh, reflection is like a scaling but a uh, constraint to the values of uh, negative one or one so you can see the diagonal is negative one in here only that's and that's gonna be let's let's modify this a little bit uh, So we have a let's let's do this. Yeah, now we have a negative one. So we're gonna flip it horizontally and vertically. So let's see how it looks. Yeah, we flip it horizontally and vertically. Okay. Okay. Uh, again, shear. Let's see how shear looks. Yeah, it's using other elements of the matrix, and it's gonna twist the image okay uh, another yeah you can use also callbacks uh, to specify the values uh, let me see what else yeah also it's important when you rotate uh, you can specify uh, i mean let's go back to the rotation uh, sometimes in this affine transformation you can uh, lose pixels like for example in rotation uh, so IM warp offers you a, a parameter to specify the field value. In this case, this is red, green, blue, and we're just going to specify the middle one, which is gray. So let's take a look at the image. So we see gray in the pixels lost. Okay. Uh, you can also crop uh, images. Uh, you can change uh, the co uh, properties using the jitter color HSB. Uh, a function we can change the properties of, of the of the of the color for example brightness we can we can specify that it's negative uh, from this value to this value uh, so we can we re, we reduce the, the intensity of the image by specifying negative values so notice here that there's no complication you just apply this to the image and that's it uh, but let's do it a little bit different. This is monotonically increasing, so let's make it uh, like this. And this is gonna, this should make the image brighter. Yeah, yeah, effectively. Yeah, so that our properties like contrast, brightness, uh, hue, uh, saturation, and you can play around with those properties as well. Uh, to see the result. Uh, also, you can apply noise to the image. Uh, let's Take the original image and apply some uh, noise with salt and pepper, and you, you can see that uh, for noise, I am noise. You have different uh, options. In this case, we use salt and pepper with 0.1 parameter, and we can use Gaussian, and we can see that Gaussian might, might be less chaotic than the one in the left is the salt and pepper, and the right is Gaussian. Gaussian is a little less chaotic. So, okay, for the data augmentation example with data stores, we're going to use both of them. We're going to see in a moment. Okay, so now uh, now that we played around with that, now let's uh, use again the digit uh, data, data set. Uh, and let's go to that uh, place. It's, uh, it's in, the ch in the shipping folder uh, from the distribution of MATLAB. So each folder has the, the digits, uh, zero and means that all the images are, here are zero. So you can infer the labels from the, uh, from the folder. So yeah, so we're gonna create an image data store, which is a data store specialized for images. And uh, we're gonna include the subdirectories because we have subdirectories and the labels are inferred from the folder names. So this is the path. And that's how we get all the images in the data store. Whoops. Okay. Let's see how that looks. 
Okay, so we have all the files in here, and we also have the labels. You can see how the labels uh, were derived. Okay, and we have a total of 10,000 images. Okay, so now let's establish the, the batch size as six, six samples per batch. And now we're going to use uh, this function here uh, to create a transform. This is a transform, transform data store. This is uh, right now not, exe not executing until we use it in the neural network or we use the preview command to generate the, the images out of that data store. Let's see how what this data store is. Uh, this is like a like a node in a tensor graph, like in TensorFlow. Uh, the node uh, has the operation, and the operation is the the callback function that you specify in here that is going to introduce all the noise and define transformations that, that you see in here. And the child is the image data store. So this is going to be applied to all the tensors in, in the input. That is the child node. Okay, so let's preview it. Use, let's use the method preview. Preview is going to generate the images. So let's see how, how it happens. Yeah, okay. I used the wrong name. Okay, so now we're in the breakpoint. So the, the input data is going to be the, the images, the original image. And when we created this transform, we pass this parameter include info. And that means that the information of the, of the, of the data store is passed into a callback. In this case, we get information like file name, file size, and label. And label is the one that we need because we're going to pass forward in the, in the label. The output is going to be a, a, pair, a, a pair of columns. The column on the left is going to be a transform image, and the right is going to be a label. So yeah, so we're just going to put it uh, forward in the, in, the, in, the, in the second column. And the first column is going to be a transform image. So let's see how it happens, how it happens. OK, so first uh, we get the, the image, apply the Gaussian filter. Instead of using IM nodes with Gaussian, we just use the IM Gaussian filter uh, with some random value. And then apply the random transformation. And you can see here that we use scaling and rotation, both at the same time. So we get transform. And let's take a look at the, the matrix. Yeah, so you can see the rotation here and the scaling is in the di diagonal. OK. So we got the reference frame, and we apply IM warp to the image. And yeah, uh, we're going to see the output later. OK, so yeah, we just keep, uh, you can see here how it's been populated. Uh, so we have output image and label. OK, so let's get out of here. And the output, this is the output. So, it's, uh, so let's just take a look at the first column, all the images in the first column. OK, now stay, let's take a look. So we have a total of six images because that's sample size. And we, as, as you saw, we introduced salt and pepper noise. We did some rotation, some scaling. Yeah. And all of them have the label of zero. So that's how you train. And at the bottom, there's a, uh, in the description of this video, there's a reference to how this type of data store with augmentation is fed to an, a classification convolutional neural network to recognize uh, the digit 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So take a look at that video to see how it is used with the deep learning. So there, also in the description, there's another reference video of how uh, to use data stores uh, for a regression problem. And the regression problem is removing noise from the image. Uh, it's, a, it's a regression problem because the the training data is the image with noise and the label data the label is going to be the image without the noise and so for that uh, we're going to use this function here so uh, we are going to use also data augmentation for that data store so we're going to apply noise for training but uh, for the label it's not going to have noise but for uh, when do we do affine transforms uh, for the training data, we have to apply the same affine transform uh, to the to the label because if we rotate in 90 degrees, the label has to be rotated 90 degrees. If we don't do the same for the label, then it's like uh, comparing oranges and apples. 
So that's why it's a little bit more complicated. And for this, we have to use a combined data store. And keep seeing this as a tensor flow graph. Uh, and the combined data store is going to take as input the, the two original, uh, the image, the original uh, image data store. So let's take a look. It is called a combined data store and it has two children. The two children are uh, a set, an array of tensors, a couple of cell arrays of, of tensors, of images. Okay, uh, and now we're gonna preview. We're gonna preview that uh, uh, the, the, the the output images of of this combined tensor. Okay. Okay. No, no. Uh, this is not gonna call the callback yet. So we're just gonna see the combined. Yeah, so this is basically what the combine, uh, the preview is not going to call any color my but I'm going to do it in a moment. So basically, the combine uh, data store is basically a set of uh, data, I mean, the training data and the label data. But the one in the left, the column is the one that we're going to trade with the noise, we're going to put the noise, etc. But both of them are going to get the affine transformations. Okay, so let's keep going. Now, uh, Let's, now we create a transform, a transform data store, and this is going to have the, the callback to apply the transformation. And the input is the combined, the combined uh, uh, the data store, the combined data store that we just created. So let's take a look. So you can see here that this is a node in the graph. Uh, the operation is defined by the callback, and the child node is going to be the combined data store. And then this is the first level. Second level uh, is another node that's a couple children. So we have three levels in total in the TensorFlow graph that we have right now. I mean, I mean sorry, it's not TensorFlow. It's Tensor. It's like a Tensor graph. Okay. Okay. So now uh, we're gonna use the preview method to generate the outputs from this data store uh, graph. Okay. Uh, so this is gonna invoke uh, the callback in the in the data store. Let's take a look. Okay, so the input is the two columns from the batch, and the output is going to be a, a cell array of two columns. Training data is column in the left, and label data is in the right. So the input image, oops. Okay, so yeah, a a couple of transformations that we're going to do is a resizing. A, a, as you will see in the reference videos, when we train the neural network, the convolutional neural networks have a max pooling a layer. And that max pooling a, basically divides the image size by two. So because we repeatedly divide by two, we want to resize it into a power of two a, a, a image size. And also, the, we convert the image to single a, because the input is Cosine integral 8. So we apply the same pre processing to both of the target, uh, the image, the input image, and the target label image. So we apply the, the noise as we did before only to the input image, the training image, and apply the, this. And then uh, we get uh, the affine transformation again as we did before, scaling and rotation and the reference frame. And both of them are going to be applied to both the input and the target image. Okay. Now we're gonna keep doing this and we're still populating the array. We can see in here. And let's see the output. Now you can see in here the noise and the rotation and scaling is the same for both of them. Okay, so to see how this is used in the with a deep learning neural network training, uh, watch the refer the videos in the the reference videos in the description. Thank you very much uh, for watching.